This is Don't Call Tech Support. Before the review, I filmed a short unboxing. If you want to skip to the benchmarks, I have pinned a comment with a timestamp for that down in the comments. If I can't pin a comment. Okay, so this is the MSI version of the new Radeon card. And this is not a custom cooler, it's the Refluence cooler. It's only sold by MSI, so they put their logo onto the fan, I think. Let's open it up and find out. So I'm not gonna keep this thing, uh, it is going back, but uh, I just, I was curious, so I thought I'd check it out. Now let's see what's inside. I have not opened this thing yet, so, okay, that's upside down. Okay, the box goes away, sorry about that. There's a card, thank you for choosing MSI. Some foam, more MSI stuff. Okay, so here we are. This is the new Navi with the dent or whatever you want to call it. The curve, the dent. I don't think it looks too bad actually. I quite like it. I know a lot of people hate on the design but I think it's kind of cool. And there is actually some heft to this card. It's not a light card. I know this uh, uh, shroud kind of looks like plastic. At least to me it uh, did on the images and stuff. But it is actually aluminum. So there is... Uh, Quite some heft to the card. It's a nice backplate with a sticker because it gets hot, so don't touch it. Uh, obviously, I can't uh, do a tear down or anything because this card is going back. And uh, right here, there's a warranty void sticker if you uh, uh, disassemble it. So, uh, here on the end, we have uh, yeah, that's, that's three display ports and one HDMI. And here's the power connectors. I actually I quite quite like this design. Even though a lot of people don't like it, I think it looks quite good. And MSI has plastered their logo all over the fan. I think if you get a Sapphire version, that's... I don't think they have the logo on the fan. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. That's the card. That's the quick unboxing. Now, let's... Get on with it. Today we're testing the new AMD Navi GPU, the Radeon 5700 XT. From what I gathered, listening to a couple of interviews with Scott Herkelman, they have uh, Herkelman, man, I don't know. They have revamped the naming scheme for the GPUs. Therefore, the 5700 and 5700 XT is not necessarily the successor to the 570. They're basically starting from scratch. He admitted that they haven't had the best naming scheme the last couple of years, to which I agree. I mean, they had the RX 560, 570, 580, 590, which is was pretty clear. Uh, then they had Vega 56 and 64 on top of those again, and more recently Radeon 7, which is technically also a Vega card. A bit of a messy lineup uh, naming-wise, I think, but uh, now they have a fresh start with a new architecture. The new cards have an MSRP of $349 for the 5700 and $399 for the 5700 XT. Only the reference design is available at the time of testing and an AMD rep has said that the AIB models will be available in mid-August. The 5700 XT is the spiritual successor to the R9 290 in my opinion. And what I mean by that is that both cards featured identical hardware specs, uh, different architecture and manufacturing process. Uh, which uh, with the Navi being 7 nanometer and the R9 290 being 28 nanometers. But if we take a quick look at the hardware specs, we see that both cards have 2560 stream processors, 160 texture units, 64 ROPs, and 40 compute units. In addition, both cards have a $399 MSRP. Uh, for testing, I used an i5 6600K at 4.8 GHz with 16 GB of DDR4 3200 MHz CL16 memory on a MSI C170A gaming and M7 motherboard. Included in our benchmarks are the R9 290, GTX 1660 Ti, GTX 1070 and GTX 1070 SLI in those titles that supported it. So if one of your cards is one of those, you can get an idea of the performance improvement you'll see with the Navi cards. Uh, I have to confess that the GTX 1660 Ti numbers are actually quite old on all drivers. I think it was 418.81 or something like that. Uh, the numbers for the 1070 and uh, is on the 430.86 driver. And the numbers for the R9 290 are the 19.6.0. 
7 or something like that. And the Navi was, of course, the launch driver, which was 19.7.1, I think. So, uh, yeah, so, so the numbers for the GTX 1660 Ti is not... Uh, I, I shouldn't have included those, but I have, so... Yeah, what's done is done. The numbers at 1080p are in some cases limited by the CPU, so do keep that in mind. I have made a note on the graphs where the limitation is significant. I was going to test on the new R5600 and I had started testing on that, but uh, several problems came up, uh, which I will get into in that review of the CPU. Enough with, the what, with all this talk, let's just see what the GPU can do. We kick things off with Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p, the 5700 XT edges out the 1070s in SLI at 193.7 frames per second on average, with frame times above 144 frames per second. It is 120% faster than the R9 290 and 42% faster than the GTX 1070 in this title. Moving to 1440p, the 5700 XT is falling slightly behind the 1070 SLI setup here with 119.2 frames per second on average, with 0.1% load dipping just under 100 frames per second. It is, however, 43% faster than the single GTX 1070 and 112% faster than the R9 290 at this resolution. At 4K, the Radeon is nipping at the heels of the 1070s in SLI at 55.7 frames per second on average, still keeping the 42% lead over the GTX 1070. The uh, RX 5700 XT has a good showing in Rainbow Six Siege. And next up is Devil May Cry 5. In this title we test in a cutscene, as those are more GPU intensive than freeplay, or whatever I'm gonna call it, so expect higher FPS in freeplay, but uh, still we are limited at 1080p by our CPU in this title with the RX 5700 XT, therefore we won't get into the numbers here, I'll just show you and let's move on to 1440p. In 1440p the RX 5700 XT managed 113.8 frames per second on average, a massive 130% ahead of the distant cousin the R9 290. Compared to the GTX 1070, the RX 5700 XT is 57% ahead in this title. In 4K we're averaging just under 60 frames per second at 58.7 frames per second. And in free play we were actually well above 60, but yeah. The GTX 1070 has gained slightly, but it is still 50% behind the RX 5700 XT at 4K. And of course this title doesn't support SLI, so I haven't tested SLI. Next game is The Witcher 3. Again, we start at 1080p, but once again, we won't get too much into that because the RX 5700 XT is being held back by the CPU. It might not seem like it because the SLI setup is able to push more frames, but uh, when tested with the R5600, the 5700 XT was on par with the SLI setup. So, yeah, it, it's also like the, the SLI setup but is being limited by the R5 at 1080p. Moving on to 1440p, at this resolution the GPU does most of the hard work and the RX 5700 XT is able to stretch its legs. At 84 frames per second on average, it is 11% behind the SLI setup, but 46% ahead of a single GTX 1070 and 131% ahead of the R9 290. Putting even more load on the GPU at 4K and we see that the two 1070s in SLI is increasing uh, their lead uh, ever so slightly at 53.6 frames per second on average to the 5700XT's 45.5 frames per second on average, an 18% difference in favor of the SLI setup. Still the RX 5700XT uh, is 56% ahead of a single 1070. Next up is Battlefield 5. In this title I tested in single player to try to avoid a CPU limitation. Uh, at 1080p, the 5700 XT is averaging 142 frames per second on average. Yeah, of course it's averaging that. Basically on par with the 1070s in SLI, compared to the R9 290, the 5700 XT is 120% faster. And it's 66% ahead of a single 1070 at 85.3 frames per second average. In 1440p, the SLI setup is, is pulling ahead. The 5700 XT was doing 98.7 frames per second on average. 15% behind the SLI setup, still it was 64% ahead of a single GTX 1070, and compared to an R9 290, the 5700 XT was 144% faster. At a crazy resolution of 4K, the RX 5700 XT averaged 57.4 frames per second, 16% behind the 1070s in the SLI, but 76% ahead of a single 1070, which had a hard time at 4K. 
The next game we're looking at is Ghost Recon Wildlands. At 1080p, the 5700 XT is doing 70.1 frames per second on average, slightly ahead of the SLI setup. Although there may be a CPU battle luck here, as we will see when we go to 1440p. The GTX 1070 is 28% behind the 5700 XP, the smallest difference between the cards so far in our testing. And the 5700 XT is 120% ahead of the R9 290. Upping the resolution to 1440p, the SLI setup takes the lead, and the average of 66.4 frames per second is almost identical to the 1080p result. The Future 700 XT was 16% behind the SLI setup at 57.3 frames per second on average, and again 28% ahead of a single GTX 1070. I didn't do 4K testing in this title. Next is the Shadow of the, to uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p, the RX 5700 XT is again hindered by the CPU, so we won't focus on the, these figures. Instead, we just move on to 1440p. At 1440p, the RX 5700 XT did 67.4 frames per second on average, which is 51% ahead of a single GTX 1070, but 16% behind the SLI setup. Upping the resolution to 4K and the RX 5700 XT is down to 34.2 frames per second on average. The dual 1070s does quite a bit better at 54.3 frames per second on average, a 59% lead, the most we've seen so far in this test. The RX 5700 XT did, however, beat a single uh, 1070 by about 50%. Next game is the Division 2. At 1080p, the RX 5700 XT did 98.3 frames per second on average, 39% ahead of the GTX 1070, and 116% ahead of the R9 290. At 1440p, the RX 5700 XT did 67.5 fra frames per second on average, 63% ahead of the GTX 1070 at 41.3 frames per second on average, and 121% ahead of the R9 290 at 30.6 frames per second on average. In 4K, the 5700 XT did 38.3 frames per second average, a monumental 268% ahead of the GTX 1070, which did 10.4 frames per second average. Quite a quite a difference there. But what about overclocking? Uh, well, I added 50% power limit and a target of 2100 MHz core clock and up the memory to 900 MHz, as seen from Afterburner. The core clock uh, hovered around 20-50 MHz when, uh, when in-game, and I cranked the fan to 100%. At stock, the core clock fluctuates quite a lot. Uh, it goes from 17-50 MHz to 18-50 MHz. In Rainbow Six Siege, we're now crossing 200 frames per second at 210.9 frames per second average, and 9% increase over stock. In 1440p, the 5700 XT now does 131.1 frames per second on average, a 12% increase over stock. In The Witcher 3, at 1440p, we are GPU bound, and we are now doing 90.8 frames per second on average, an 8% increase over a stock. Still not quite able to catch a 1070s in SLI, but an improvement nonetheless. But what about power consumption? Power consumption is measured in total system power, uh, which uh, was measured using a Corsair RM1000i and using the power out figure that that uh, PCU uh, reports, <laughs> which is what the system consumes after efficiency losses in the PSU. In addition, I've also added uh, what the reported consumption of the GPU was through software. So power consumption is measured in the Witcher 3, in the Witcher 3 at 1440p. The dual 1070s saw the highest system power consumption at 430 watts. The stock RX 5700 XT system consumed 321 watts, with a reported 9, uh, 197 watts consumed by the GPU. But when we compare this to the other figures, that number seems a bit low, a bit off. When overclocking, efficiency goes out the window, and the RX 5700 XT sees a total system consumption of 408 watts, a 27% increase over stock. At stock, the RX 5700 XT consumes 16% more than the DTX 1070. Next, we look at performance per watt in the Wishes 3 at 1440p. Numbers here are watts per FPS, so a lumber, lower number means less power required per frame. The old R9 290 is not even competing here at 1440p. Uh, the RX 5700 XT is looking pretty good here at 3.82 watts per frame delivered. It, or per FPS delivered, it consumes more power than a 1070, but delivers better performance. When overclocking, the 5700 XT consumes 15% more power per frame. 
uh, before we look at how the cooler is performing, first we will take a look at the relative performance. So the 1070 SLI setup delivers on average 10% more performance over the games tested than the RX 2700 XT, but there isn't enough game supporting SLI for that to be a viable solution, in my opinion. If you're still using an R9 290 and you want a new AMD card, it's time to upgrade, as the RX 2700 XT delivers more than twice the performance of the R9 290. If you're on the GTX 1070, it could be worth it for you to upgrade as the 1070 is, deliver is delivering a bit of a half the FPS of the RX 2700 XT in 1440p. So, uh, how is the blower cooler on the RX 2700 XT? Is the magical curve or dent keeping it cool and quiet? Uh, no, not really. If we start off with temperature at idle, it's about 70 degrees Celsius over ambient, which makes it around 41 degrees Celsius in my case. And the load, which is about 20%, uh, 20 minutes uh, fire strike stress test, that increases to 61 degrees Celsius over ambient, or 87 degrees Celsius in my case. The GTX 1070 Gaming X was quite a bit cooler under load at 47 degrees Celsius over ambient. At idle it was slightly warmer at 22 degrees over ambi ambient, but that is because the fans are not running when the card is under a certain threshold. I think it's 60 degrees Celsius. The fan speed under idle is 680 RPM, and it's pretty much silent at that speed. Uh, under load that was increased to 2100 RPM, and at that speed it is very much audible. Measured noise level was 38.6 uh, decibels while idle and 46 decibels under load or at 2100 RPM fan speed. This was measured 30 centimeters away from the case with the side panel on, just as you would have it on your desk. The Gaming X was much quieter on the load at 39 decibels. Uh, following is a short comparison of the noise. So, in conclusion then, do I recommend the RX 5700 XT? Well, if ray tracing is something you want, then no, obviously. But for high refresh rate, 1080 or 1440p gaming, then yeah, yeah, I do recommend the RX 5700 XT, but not this one. I cannot give this card my recommended stamp, it's just, it's a bit too loud, in my opinion. Uh, my recommendation then is to wait until the board partner cards arrive, then pick up a dual or triple fan version. They will be quieter and quite possibly faster as well. Well, that's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm off testing the Ryzen R5 3600. Farewell.